we have risky business. Good morning, members of the Board of Directors. My name is Shai Yusuf. I'm Leah Kahamo. And I'm Winter Brooks. And today we're here to present to you our integrated strategy to um, integrate our social responsibility plan. So currently we're looking at um, the Monsanto Fund, our philanthropy arm, <coughs> the philanthropy arm of our organization. And up here we have all the different organizations that our organization is currently sponsoring. We have, and one of the things that these things all have in common is they have absolutely nothing in common. We have everything from <laughs> fire stations in Malawi, to youth development in China, to international and um, rural education in the United States and abroad. What this is doing is combining to all amass to $41 million. This, as a result, has led to no return on investment, especially because everything that we've been investing in has nothing to do with in relation to our business plan. Coupled with this is the fact that we're still reflected poorly in the public image. As of 2013, 51% of people in the United States still believe that we are the most evil corporation. And coupled with that is stagnating sales. Now, all of these things together bring us to present to you our integrated plan, which my colleague Winter will share with you now. Thank you, Shaheen. So we noticed that our current model is not integrating social responsibility into our bottom line, which is why we're not seeing return on investment. However, our plan, the Monsanto Agricultural <coughs> Advancement Program, allows us to partner with USAID and local organizations so we can have a presence in our, the countries we will be operating in to provide resources needed to eliminate barriers to entry in the agricultural market and to also gain the trust of potential customers by really catering to the needs of those countries. So now we will present why we are partnering with USAID. We picked this or specific organization because they have had experience and knowledge um, operating in multiple different countries, funding multiple, a lot of different programs. Um, this is cost effective for us because we won't have to spend as much money on research and development. Also, with their knowledge and research on these countries, we will be able to prepare the best implementation plan for our program. So what is our program? Lydia is here to talk about our pilot program. Okay, so the vision for this pilot program is producing more, conserving more, improving lives in Ghana. And this comes directly from our personal commitment to sustainable agriculture. We want to focus our efforts in the top three regions of Ghana in the north there, demonstrated on the map, uh, and that's outlined in our mission statement. And this is primarily because those regions are really lacking the resources for this type of uh, sustainable development and these efforts in uh, uh, activism and uh, these social efforts, uh, and that's outlined here. So uh, why did we choose to do this? Uh, so these are the target uh, Millennium Development Goals that are outlined in Ghana's 2015 report, and we really saw um, that we could align our business model with this, and we saw an opportunity to capitalize on these things. Uh, the goals 1, 3, and 7 are listed here, and they're going to be outlined throughout our presentation. And Winter's going to introduce the first recommendation. Our first recommendation focuses on our partnership with USAID, um, and we will be working with them to develop innovative farming technology and to expand job um, employment for, for women. So our first part focuses on a Monsanto USAID Collaborative Learning and Research Center. We decided to put this in the northern regions of Ghana specifically because they've had a deficit in rice production for the past five years, and we believe that with our technology we will be able to reverse this trend. So we will be focusing partnering mainly with the Advancement Project, which is funded by USAID through the ACDI VOGA program. Um, we picked this program in specifically because they focus on increasing agricultural productivity through technology. That's what, what, that's what our goal is, so it's the perfect partnership. So the goals of the center will be to develop that technology needed to reverse this trend, um, and we will also will sponsor current pre-planting and pre-harvesting programs. And in those programs, we will be offering our products and training farmers on how to use our special seed treatment products um, to really so they are able to buy from us directly. And the benefits from this, this is that through the training and introducing our farmers to our products exclusively, they, we will increase sales because we will have tap into this, this market that hasn't really been touched by any other um, company that does what we do. So now Shaheen will talk about the second part. Thank you, Winter. So the second part of our first recommendation deals explicitly with the third millennium development goal, which is to promote gender equitable opportunities for women. Um, so the way we plan on doing this in increasing the number of women who are entering the farming industry is through something we call the farmer equity, no equity model. This is a four-prong plan which begins first with the loan application that someone would submit to the Bank of Ghana. We, we are requiring that half of those microloans be issued to Ghana, issued to Ghana women. The second part of our plan deals expressly with making sure that our products are at the forefront of this plan. And we're going to do that with the express sale of decal seeds at every part of our interactions. 
And the third part, similar to our first part of the recommendation, deals expressly with pairing with USAID with um, the Farmer to Farmer program. This program is essential because it allows for one-to-one -one pairing of US farmers and volunteers to ensure that new farmers and farmers who are more inexperienced because they haven't been given the opportunity still have the same opportunities to gain the knowledge, skills, and the resources they need to be successful. And the fourth prong of our plan is um, accountability from us, Monsanto, to ensure that we, the guidelines that we establish and the evaluative guidelines that we establish are being followed and met. So this is why it's the perfect time. As we can see, the monetary policy rate in Ghana, as indicated by the National Bank of Ghana, is at an all-time historical high at 26%. We need to get in now and take advantage of this historical sense of stability. And some of the benefits of this farmer equity model, the first and foremost is it's extremely cost effective because it takes advantage of the existing infrastructure within Ghana. The Ghanaian Bank has, the Ghanaian Bank, as we're pairing with the Ghanaian government, has the ability to put in places for the enforcement mechanisms and all the other kinds of things that we don't really want to make sure that we're not necessarily getting into because of the risk. So this makes it extremely cost effective. And the second and third point kind of go in line because we want to make sure that we're creating farming as, farming as a family business. What that means is the idea of if a woman and a man who are running a family have the opportunity to both be involved in the farming industry, it creates the opportunity for the next generation of farmers. And because the cow seeds will be at the forefront of our operations, it ensures that for generations to come, we create the sustainable model in which we are not only giving to them, but we are receiving back on our investment. And fourthly, it leads to the eradication of poverty, which directly re relates to our first goal and allows more people to invest in the market. Now I'm going to pass it off to Lydia, who's going to talk about our second recommendation. Thank you, Shaheen. Um, so our Water Utilization Learning Center is going to collaborate with Ghana Irrigation Development Authority, otherwise known as GIDA, to implement efficient irrigation systems and improve the water management education. Alright, so some of the services of GIDA include soil surveys in which they chemically and physically test the soil to ensure that the correct crops are being cultivated, make sure that the soil is really being used uh, in the best way. Water and soil conservation, water harvesting, in which they collect all the water gathered by these irrigation systems and may really make sure it's being used productively and efficiently. And farmer education, which is absolutely crucial because these farmers need to understand why these irrigation systems are in place and how they can, benefit, how can they reap the most benefits from them. Uh, so when we collaborate with Gita in the Upper West region, uh, Ghana has indicated in response to their uh, mission six, or mission seven, excuse me, which is um, relative to sustainability, that they're actually lacking a lot of irrigation systems. <coughs> and in the Upper West region in particular, there are no irrigation systems. It's one of the only regions that doesn't have any. So this is why we need to concentrate our efforts here. Uh, we will be doing planning and budgeting, developing and building alongside with Gita because this is what they do best. I mean, they've been in uh, existence for several years and this is what they do well. Uh, we will monitor economic, social, and environmental impacts to ensure that we're really filling the gaps and adapting as needed uh, with this strategy. And we want to educate farmers in water management and Monsanto seed products, specifically the decalb seed. Um, in the Upper West region, there's a drought season from October to May, so it's crucial that they have these decalb seeds that are actually drought resistant. So these farmers need to understand the utility of our products. They're really going to understand the utility. We're going to be building um, relationships with them to increase sales and increase our customer base in Ghana. So how do we know this works? Well, because it worked before. Um, our Water Utilization Learning Center actually partnered with Aquatech in Italy in 2013 to install a series of irrigation systems uh, uh, to uh, educate on water management. And within a year, sales increased 27.74%. And 11% of our turnover is already allocated to research and development. And given that 12% of our sales are made up of Europe and Africa, we've already moved into Europe with these irrigation systems and saw results. We really need to push to move into Africa. This is an opportunity for us. So how is this going to work? First, we'll submit our proposals to USAID and GITA to start moving to research and development. There, we will decide the best, most appropriate and cost-effective ways to establish a presence in Ghana. Then, after that, we'll go start our construction process and um, provide evaluation tactics to measure our success. And how are we going to pay for it? This is a four-part plan with our estimated financials. The first component is construction costs and labor for the learning center itself. The second part deals expressly with our microloans program offered by the Bank of Ghana. And what that allows for is $6,500 that we're going to be sponsoring maximum 1,000 loans given out over a four-year period. And half of those loans have to be given to women. The third part is our farmer to farmer program with which the sticker price for USAID is $7.2 million over a span of five years. And lastly, the cost of the irrigation system itself is a maximum of $1,020 per farm. And the most important thing we want to point out here is the effectiveness and the impactfulness that we are going to get out of these investments compared to the $44 million that we wasted with our 
Alright, um, uh, to sum it all up for you, we're going to unveil this program in 2017. We've integrated social responsibility with Bottom Line, and this really will ensure benefit for all, for everyone, but especially ourselves. Um, and uh, we will be creating the return on investment that we've been looking for as a company. How are you going to get, is this an ROI that you get by redirecting funds that you're already spending, or are you actually going to get some revenue here that's going to, other than the return, the return payments and loans, is there any revenue that comes to this, and what is it? Yes, it's actually, we will be reallocating our funds towards projects that empower farmers and bringing more farmers into the market. There, we will be training them with our products, therefore they'll be buying our products, which will, we will gain revenue from those additional sales. So this is from the $41 million that we're currently spending a year? Yes. Well, what are we going to tell all those charities and all those programs that when we take money away from, is that going to cause some reputational risk? Well, we won't have to take money fully away from the Monsanto Fund. We're still going to keep that in place. This is an additional project that we will be implementing. So I wouldn't say that we would completely draw away funds. We will be not in a, and we will be reallocating and also pr providing additional funds, which will also um, be reinvested into our company. So we won't have to entirely wipe out the Monsanto Fund. That's a very um, um, useful and, prop and um, helpful organization that we already have in place. How do you monitor um, the use or potential misuse of the microloans? Um, thank you for that question. So we have a two-part approach to making sure that the microloans are used effectively. The first, the first way is through our USAID program with Farmer to Farmer. Farmer to Farmer has a long storied history since 1997 of working with farmers specifically in the Western African region, including co countries in Ghana, to make sure that whoever receives a loan is using it not only for um, farming, but using it effectively. We want to make sure that not only are they using the loan, but they have the opportunity to grow with it. And the second way we're going to do that is through our partnership with the Ghanaian government. We're working through the National Bank of Ghana, so they have the resources and the infrastructure on the ground to make sure that safety is being enforced, and we want to make sure that they're kind of attaining that risk and not us, but it is taken care of. Thanks. Is there a uh, PR component, and if so, what's the um, as for the PR component, uh, we're looking to uh, look to the PR and marketing department to, in order to really get our name out in the press in a more positive light. It was demonstrated in an earlier slide on a pie chart that 51% of people regard us as an evil company. Um, and we really want to change that reflection in the media, so we need to kind of negotiate with our PR department, find out what is the best strategy in terms of press outreach. Uh, it, could be, it could be on platforms that are relatively less costly, like social media, or outlets like that. Um, so we would need to look into it and we need to discuss uh, with the PR department relative to costs uh, because it would really vary depending on our strategy choice. Okay. I want to ask a follow-up question to that. Who do you think needs to be the target of whatever PR? I mean, who do you need to convince first in order to be able to come in? Well, we definitely need to appeal to millennials. We know that millennials are um, tend to attract more to um, more social corporate responsibly, um, responsible companies. Um, and a lot of millennials are also interested in supporting companies that help others, especially globally, um, since we're a now um, more globally connected society as a whole. So I think that using social media and other tactics like that will really um, attract that market. I, I want to just push back on you in one second. Are you talking about millennials in the U.S. or millennials in Ghana? Well, we can use millennials here and in Ghana, but to fix our reputation in the United States, we would attract millennials here. In Ghana, I feel like that would be a different um, technique because one, the Ghanaian people have still also have a negative, um, they have negative perception of Monsanto. So we would have to attract more of the older population, also the government, um, to really buy into what we want to do. Which is another reason why we're working directly with locals. We want to make sure we're really establishing relationships. Um, we've pretty much established that the Ghana government is anti gmo So. Why do you feel you be able to influence the bank of Ghana to work with you in distributing these loans and mandating that half of them go to women? Thank you for the question. I think I think that's where we utilize and kind of leverage our relationship with USAID. Um, while Monsanto and our corporation's image and reputation within the Ghanaian infrastructure is in a negative light, we believe that partnering with um, 
USAID, an organization that has worked within the Ghanaian government and within the Ghanaian infrastructure with <coughs> local Ghanaian nonprofits, allows us to leverage that relationship and use it to our advantage and use their existing relationship. And establishing kind of that rapport with USAID through our commitment to our various two to three prong programs that we believe will be enough to propose this to the National Bank of Ghana. And also I think, in addition to that, I feel as though, given the recent spike in the monetary rate given with the Bank of Ghana, I feel that they will also view this as an opportunity for more people to use their existing infrastructure for loan applications as well. You're, you're proposing to use uh, irrigation systems at the same time trying to change the crops. Aren't you not changing the crops enough if you have to use irrigation? Well, we would, the first part with the research and development center, we also will be looking for um, different, the best type of seed. So we also will be changing the type of crop as well because I, um, it's been shown that rice doesn't grow well in the northern regions of Ghana due to the lack of rainfall. So they need to find a uh, seed that does not need, oh, guys, you can see in the graph. So um, we need to find a different product, a different type of um, uh, engine engineered rice um, crop that we could, that will actually sustain that environment. Yeah, that's another reason why partnering with Gita is extremely beneficial to us because they do the soil survey. So they find out which crops uh, should be cultivated in a certain way and which way and what seeds are best. Uh, so partnering with them is extremely beneficial for this particular initiative. But did you determine whether you can do it without irrigation with your with your best seeds and their rainfall? I think that we will decide that when we go into research and development. Um, right in that stage, right, we haven't had a chance to really dive deep into which system is best. If we find that we can do it without irrigation, we might have to reconsider our proposal. However, I feel that we need, really need to start researching and developing before I can get back to an answer. So, just to clarify, are we providing any money to the Bank of Ghana for those microloans? And then the second part of the question is, how did you come up with $6,500 for the microloans, and what's the return on investment from, from doing that? Um, thank you for your question. So the first part of your question, we um, yes, we were supplying those loans. Uh, we were sponsoring no more than 1,000 loans maximum, and 500 by that math would have to go to women. This is the calculation of what we came up for the microloans program. So microloans in the United States, as reported by the Small Business Administration, cost 13000 We decided it would be best on that logic to split that in half to 6,500. Like I said, the number of maximum loans to be issued is 1,000, and the 500 loans to women farmers. And then the total cost of loan insurance over a four-year period would be 6.5 million, and the total cost of loan issuance per year would be approximately 1.63. Just to clarify that your 6,500 was based on some U.S. numbers for microloans. Correct. Why not use the same numbers in the U.S.? Why can't are going to have these people come up short in terms of what they need to start the program? Not necessarily. We believe that um, I, I, one of the things that we um, came across in our research is that um, the Farmer to Farmer program, utilizing that, if we were not use, utilizing the Farmer to Farmer program, which has a history of um, saving $50 million in professional um, assistance, if we weren't using that, it would probably be more logical to give the 13000 to allow the farmer to kind of come up with the opportunities to attain the resources and such. But because we're already sponsoring this program, we feel as though to sponsor half in addition to sponsoring the additional support and the resources. So in the United States, by comparison, you have small business loans, but a lot of small businesses already have the existing infrastructure because we're going into such an underdeveloped part. We want to partner that with the tools and the skills in addition to the money. But, but why, um fix the amount of 65 as opposed to 6500 as opposed to judging what they need on, on a particular basis. For so, example, if somebody needs equipment, then that might be a different amount of a loan versus something else. Yep, so um, as Winter said, um, and one of the things we wanted to make sure that was clear throughout all of our financials is that a lot of these prices are negotiable, and throughout more research and development and more understanding of what exactly the terrain that we're entering in the three northern regions of Ghana, we will do more assessments and evaluative criteria as time goes on. But however, we do feel as a pilot to ensure that we are being transparent up front and giving the kind of groundwork and giving the groundwork for information. We do believe that half of the loan, comparative to U.S. prices, in addition to the research and the resources and support, is appropriate. Is this a loan or a grant? We are microfinance grant. Right. So you don't expect repayment. <coughs> we expect 
the return on investment to be the participation in the industry. We expect that with giving these farmers micro loans and training them with our products exclusively, that they'll be um, they'll know and be familiar with our product. Therefore, they will buy our products, and we will gain this back. So it's not a loan; it's a grant. Yes. So how is how is this program of, of buy Monsanto seeds <laughs> going to be seen as being our charitable contribution to the world? Well, because it's our chair, it's a charitable charitable contribution because we are empowering people that would not necessarily be able to enter this market and do not have. <laughs> <laughs>